Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. We've talked about a lot here recently, and while I've enjoyed what I watch, I feel like I need something a bit more now. Specifically something that involves a band. Ah, that would be my band! Haha, <laughs> just what I needed. Every TV show has an episode that is considered to be the best episode by fans, and SpongeBob SquarePants is no different. Band Geeks is the episode where Squidward tries to form a band to play at the Bubble Bowl to appease his arch rival, William Fancy Son. Like The Secret Box, this episode aired on September 7, 2001, and is the episode that introduces Squidward's biggest rival, Squilliam Fancy Son. Almost every time Squilliam appears, there is some kind of rivalry between them, usually involving Squidward trying to prove he's better than Squilliam, and whether or not he wins depends on what the episode wants to do. In addition to that, there is so much this episode is known for, especially the aforementioned Bubble Bowl musical number, and all of that has made fans consider this to be the best episode of not only the main Spongebob Squarepants series, but the entire Spongebob franchise as a whole. Several of my friends have called this their favorite episode. Even though Spongebob went downhill, then entered a renaissance phase, and now is entering another downfall spiral, there are some great episodes from each season in my opinion. The movies seem to vary in quality, and the spin-offs are the worst thing anything in this franchise has ever been, but this episode is still considered to be the best. The musical number has made this episode go down in history as the best episode of the show, and everybody wanted the famous Sweet Victory song in the actual Super Bowl. There's definitely a story involving that, but we'll get to it. For now, let's watch this episode and see if this truly does deserve to be considered the best episode of the franchise. So the episode starts up and Squidward was playing his clarinet. Some vets showed up thinking Squidward had a dying animal in his house. Then Squidward answered his phone and we meet Squilliam Fancy Son, his arch rival from band class. He called to say that he was a band leader and he and his band were supposed to play at the Bubble Bowl, aka Squilliam is living Squidward's dreams. Squilliam says he's busy and can't make it and asks Squidward if his band could cover for them. Squilliam assumed Squidward didn't have a band and that he was interrupting his job at the service industry. Even if he did assume that, he's still calling Squidward while Squidward's at his house, and not his job. Squidward says he does have a band, and they will play at the Bubble Bowl. Squilliam hung up, and Squidward had only next Tuesday to drum up a marching band. <laughs> Squidward's right. Band humor is funny. People saw flyers Squidward hung up around town recruiting people to join his band. On the first night of rehearsals, Squidward arrived with a bunch of rented musical instruments. When he started the rehearsals, he discovered that none of them had played any kind of musical instruments before, but was still confident he could teach them. He tried to teach them how to play, but ended up getting pinned to the wall by drumsticks. Next, he tried to teach them about stepping in rhythm. SpongeBob thought that meant actual kicking, but Patrick wanted to do some kicking, so he kicked Sandy, which led to her beating the shit out of him and ripping his head off and putting it on a trombone. Damn, for somebody who does karate with Spongebob, Sandy does not take getting kicked very well. Day 2 The next day, they played their instruments marching through the street, and Squidward told the flag twirlers to spin their flags so fast, they ended up flying into the sky, crashing into a blimp, and dying. Day 3 The following night, Squidward checked on how Plankton was doing with a harmonica solo. Plankton said he was doing well, but when he tried to demonstrate it, he ran out of breath too quickly. To be fair, it's probably too much for Squidward to ask Sandy to do the harmonica solo, but why is Plankton doing it anyway? Day fuh. On their last night before the show, Squidward tried making them play so loudly that people will think they're good, but they ended up playing so loud Squidward's face got deformed. Harold then started an argument by saying Mr. Krabs was at fault with his BIG MEATY CLAWS! SpongeBob tried to keep them from fighting, but they ended up in an all-out brawl trying to murder each other with the musical instruments. Also known as a political debate with musical instruments. The fighting went on until class ended at 10pm. Squidward stopped them at the entrance and said that he was upset that nobody tried and even expressed that he thought that they were capable of learning how to be a band together. He told them they didn't have to show up and he would say they died in a marching accident and left crying. That was actually true. The flag twirlers died during marching practice. Swindon felt the most remorseful about failing Squidward, so he gave an inspirational speech that made everybody decide to pull together and give it their all to be a good band for the performance and make him happy. The next day, Squidward made it to the Bubble Bowl and found Squilliam waiting for him at the entrance. Squidward tried to explain why he didn't have his band, but his band showed up in uniform right behind him. Hey, at least now Squilliam knows that Squidward wasn't lying when he said he had a band. 
Squidward put on the uniform too and led the band to a huge glass dome, which took them to the football stadium to make their performance. Everybody was weirded out by how the humans looked, and Squidward hesitantly started their performance, but to his surprise, the band sounded beautiful. SpongeBob started singing the song Sweet Victory in David Glenn Isley's voice, and that was just the beginning. As SpongeBob continued singing, the crowd swayed in awe, and Squilliam fainted in shock and was carried away by paramedics. The crowd cheered as Squidward jumped in triumph with a freeze frame, and the episode ends. So that was Band Geeks, and that is an astonishing episode. Shocker! I have a lot to say about it, but this time I'll start off with a few fun facts about this episode. As we all know, the Bubble Bowl is a parody of the Super Bowl, the biggest football game of the season held at the beginning of February. The crowd for this episode was stock footage from a Memphis Showboats and Tampa Bay Bandits football game at the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Tennessee back in the 1980s. As previously stated, Sweet Victory was sung in this episode. Even though the show usually writes original songs and has the writing staff write the lyrics for the songs, Sweet Victory was one of the songs Nickelodeon had access to via a royalty-free library of music. However, this song originally wasn't planned for the scene. The band was originally supposed to play regular-ass marching band music at a high level. This idea was scrapped because they thought a 1980s power ballad would be much better. And I have to say, thank god they decided on using Sweet Victory. Just think where Spongebob would be if they didn't use David Glenn Isley's Sweet Victory song in this episode. The song was also released on Spongebob Squarepants The Yellow Album, but it's basically the version from the episode with the sound effects. Where the song fades away at the end of the episode, the version on the album adds an extra part, but without the chorus and is basically just an instrumental. This is also the third episode that ends with a song. The first two episodes are episodes 1, Help Wanted from season 1, and 42, Your Shoes Untied from season 2. Real quick, I also want to talk about the infamous chorus line quote. Is this the part where we start kicking? No, SpongeBob, that's a chorus line. I remember that confused me a bit when I was a kid, and I don't think I was the only one in that regard. For those who don't know, a chorus line is a group of dancers who perform in synchronized routines, usually in musical theater. When Squidward told the group to stand in straight rows of five, that most likely led Spongebob to think they'd be dancing in some way with rhythmic kicking or something. I was in orchestra from 3rd to 12th grade, so that line confused me, especially since I didn't sing with the chorus kids. And now that I've gone over that, let's talk about how great this episode is. But there's so much to talk about, where do I begin? I guess I'll start with Squilliam Fancy Son. This episode is a good first impression of Squilliam, Squidward's biggest rival from when he was in school, and he's clearly rich, successful, and very smug. He may only appear at the beginning and end, but this episode introduces him very well. He's a great antagonist in this episode. He seems to intentionally set Squidward up to fail, but is proven wrong when Squidward's band is amazing. But to be fair, he did have it coming. At the beginning of the episode, he said he was busy so his band couldn't play at the Bubble Bowl. The problem is, I'm busy next week and can't make it. And yet he still shows up to see Squidward fail. So it was definitely satisfying seeing him get his comeuppance and heartwarming when Squidward's dream of performing at the Bubble Bowl finally came true. Squilliam has been seen in a few other episodes in the future, but not as much as you'd think. Since the modern episodes are obsessed with bringing back older characters and referencing old jokes and using bubble baths, you'd think Squilliam would be used more often. Nope! His last appearance as of April 2023 is episode 259, Back to the Past from season 7. Unless you count this blink and you'll miss it shot where Squilliam's head appears on Squidward's nose in episode 393, Code Yellow from season 10. And considering Squilliam is voiced by D. Bradley Baker, who also voices Bubble Bass and various background characters, you'd think he'd appear more often. I wish they'd bring him back and give some backstory as to why he and Squidward hate each other in the first place. But I'm getting off topic. He's a rich, snobby, smug jerk who loves getting a rise out of Squidward, and I think he's just one of the many reasons why this episode is so memorable. And he's a very strong character at that. The hijinks with the characters during rehearsals are hilarious, and so are everybody's blank expression after Sandy beat Patrick up. Sandy beating up Patrick when he kicks her, the drummers spinning their sticks and pinning Squidward against the wall, the political debate, etc. This episode is one of the most quotable episodes in cartoon history. That's his eager face. Kicking? Oh, I want to do some kicking! Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Big meaty claws! And of course, everybody's favorite, 
Is mayonnaise an instrument? And that's only scratching the surface. I love the gag with Patrick and the trombone. The violence may drive some unhealthy thoughts in children's heads, but it's way better than what's destroying our youth today. I don't know why, but I always liked the characters reading the flyer in increments during that whole scene. Maybe it was the music, the characters they chose, I don't know why, maybe I'm just easy to please. I also like the animation too. This bird's eye view always stuck out to me, particularly because you can still see Pearl's head and the flag twirlers. Squidward's deformed face after the loud blast of music is hilarious, and so is the musical political debate. And of course, the musical performance. The Sweet Victory number is legendary. Even if it was an original song for the show like the Ripped Pants song from episode 5, Ripped Pants, everybody still sees it as one since they think of this episode whenever they hear this. I remember one time when I was young, I almost teared up when watching this when I turned on the TV right before the musical performance started. My best friend also played this song one day when we were driving home from vacation, and it felt surreal hearing that it went beyond the point where it ended in the episode. This song was so good that fans have been wanting this to be performed during the actual Super Bowl for years, and in 2019, it seemed as if we would finally get that. When Steven Hillenberg passed away in November 2018 due to ALS, online petitions went around to get that song to be performed in the 2019 Super Bowl. Over the following two months, all signs were pointing to exactly that. I even watched the Super Bowl that year because I wanted to see the song be performed. The show started, Squidward appeared and said a line, the same opening sequence happened, but then it was unfortunately just a troll because we got a song from another musical artist that I don't want to say the name of. It was so upsetting that the song didn't get played, and I'm still salty about that night even after all these years later. Fans were upset too, so the song was played the next day during a hockey game. It wasn't what we wanted, but f***ing whatever. They did put that song in the end credits of the 2023 video game, Spongebob Squarepants The Cosmic Shake, so that's something. Now with that negative note out of the way, let's talk about something more positive. The turnaround at the end is so heartwarming. Nobody really made an effort to learn how to play the instruments, and Squidward was upset that everybody let him down. Spongebob came through and inspired everybody to put forth their all so they can make Squidward proud and give him a chance to live his dreams. And the freeze frame at the end shows that he got exactly what he wanted and this was the magnum opus for the character. The best Squidward centric episode in the entire series, hands down. I'm not sure if I would consider this my absolute number one favorite episode of the series, but this does so much so right that it definitely deserves all the praise it gets. I could really go on and on about this, but I think anything else I could say right now would just be echoing what every other fan has said. A timeless classic with an epic musical number and awesome character moments, and an absolute must watch for every Spongebob fan, old or new. Band Geeks is a legendary episode. It's still amazing after all these years. With how much this episode has done, it's very hard to top it in any future season. And even though there will never be an episode that tops this one in terms of its quality, it's still an amazing episode and is the epitome of everything good about the Spongebob series as a whole. And I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, but I still could not get over how we were led to believe that the Sweet Victory song was going to be played at the Super Bowl in 2019 and how we were all smeggledorked when it wasn't. It just makes me so mad that I need to learn how to start coping again.